back to the workshop. Let's continue with the skinning. Uh, before we, st we start with the character, I want to talk about the, the tool that we're going to use for the skinning. It's called NG Skin Tools, and you can download it, uh, an evaluation version from uh, the website. That it's, uh, the link is in the description of this video. But uh, if you want to use it for production, you have to buy a license. Um, it's much better than the uh, tools that it's coming uh, by default with Maya, so it's totally worth to, to get it and will speed up your process quite a lot and also uh, allow you to, to be more flexible how you work. But let's do, a, before this start, uh, let's do a, an overview of the tool. So the tool is here, I have it loaded already. Uh, it's um, the version that I'm using right now, it's the 1.7.3. I think it's the latest version at this point recording the video. And I have prepared here a little scene with two objects and one uh, chain, a light chain, zero one. And I want to show you something first. So I'm just going to build this, this chain. It's just completely a regular default chain. And I'm just have here my my joints. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to review my skinning options. So I go to my bind skin here and Normally, I like to skin using these selected joints, so I don't use hierarchy or um, object hierarchy. So selected joints. I can normally use closes in hierarchy. Then the classic linear, interactive, neighbors, allow multiple bind poses. I set this to one to start, and the rest is unchecked. So that will be my default configuration. Now I have to go here on my deformers, so I have a shortcut to select all the members. Select my, my geometry and apply. Okay, so up to here it's pretty straightforward from Maya. And now after we apply the, the skinning, we can initialize the skin layers here. So I'm not going to use uh, NG skin layers as uh, it's meant for. You will see later, but basically the layers is a very, very nice way to organize your your um, skinning and you can take advantage of this. I will use it sometimes, but in general, I don't use it. I just use the tools itself and I use the layers sometimes uh, or to to make like versions. So I, I do some changes and I create a new copy of the layer. I do another changes. I, if I like it, I keep it. If I not, if I don't like it, I just de delete the layer. So that's the, the way I, I'm using it like 80% of the time. And um, yeah, so let's paint. So the first thing when we paint, it gets like this light thing. If we select one joint on the list here, we can see that it's uh, color coded like uh, soft image and other softwares. It's much better than the default uh, color feedback that you get on, on Maya. And yeah, it's there. So we have some tabs here. So well, let's let's start from the beginning. This is the layers list and this is the influence list. You have uh, the joints listed here and this is layer max. So when you have different layers, like in Photoshop, you can do mask of each one layer to another. So it will combine the, the layers. It's like, imagine like a Photoshop layer system. Then we have here the influence filter. So this it's, uh, I use it a lot. It's just to filter the, the joints that we can see on the, um, on the list here. I don't have too much, but if I put like this, that only will match with this one. When I press enter, it's filtered out for me. And you can do like several search, like two, like this, for instance. So it's gonna search to or use other combinations like asterisk or things like that. So you can do like very specific combinations and uh, it will help you to, to set, find everything here. So you don't need to go selecting everything. You need to know how it's named your, your joints. So you will get used to the uh, M gear or the shifter naming conventions. And yeah, it's quite fast when you get up to speed. So show all the influences, all influences that are not zero out. This is honestly, I, I always feel that we show no, all influences. Then we have the different tabs here with uh, different tools to make the, the paint. So the, the first one, obviously the paint, and it's very straightforward thing. So we have 
the brush shape I never change it normally when I work then the mode so we have the replace scale sharpen add and smooth this I, I use it a lot these changes here the intensity and the brush uh, radius for the brush radius you can use the B so it's like uh, the default Maya behavior display settings all influences multicolors never touch and yeah, I, I'm using a Wacom, a small one, like a uh, cheap one, but it's it's uh, very convenient. So if you have uh, Wacom, just use st stylus pressure and pressure mapping to opacity. And you can have to radius or broad, but I just keep it on opacity. So my radius on the on the brush is uh, is always the same. Then we have the mirror tab. The mirror tab, as you can guess, it's uh, to mirroring the uh, the weight. And um, the for the moment, the only thing I always configure up front is uh, from left to right always. So I don't want to guess from the stroke. Means the last time you brush, it says okay, I, I I'm brushing on the left side, so it's gonna mirror on the on the right side, or I'm brushing on the right side, it's gonna mirror on the left side. Um, I always brush or work on my left side of the model, so I keep it like that just in case because sometimes it gets confusing and you don't you don't remember where was the last brush that you did and it can be a little risky then vertex mapping I keep it by default normally if your uh, character is, is it's uh, facing frontal to Z positive so this is uh, correct by default and influence mapping you have some position tolerance and so on and we will check the edit influence association later but it's basically how if you have any um, confusion on on the mapping because it's using the position uh, you can arrange it here relax tools it's to relax uh, the skinning and edit weights is also to um, edit some of the weights and you, you have some like uh, unify weights also it's it's similar to to relax in the way that it's um, it's gonna unify and make more uh, continuous the, the skinning but the one that I'm gonna use like 90% of the time is this one assign weights from closest joint and I'm gonna do a quick demo with the, these two objects quickly and last it's these uh, settings that you can set the use maximum influence per vertex limit and prune small weights before writing a skin cluster so these two uh, are very useful when you're working for game engines that you have some limits like a uh, maximum limit uh, of joints and then you want to keep the minimum influence under control so that's this these two ones and you can see here that it says something like prune before writing the skin cluster what, what means that and I think we should go here so we have our object here so this is like our object and we have here like let's say this is the skin cluster node skin cluster and the engine skin it's it creates a custom node in between so it provides a layer an interface to paint your regular skin cluster so basically you do all the work here but it's baking to a skin cluster all the time and when you finish you come here and the edit and you can delete by by object or all custom nodes on the scene so this is being deleted everything is baked here and basically you don't need this tool later to open your rigs so this is something that it's just an interface for the the rigger and the the node later is deleted obviously you, you can export your layers and configuration or part of them because the, the mapping template uh, for the mirror is not a uh, store but some of the parts can be stored export or import and you can re restart again or edit if you need it so that's not like you lose completely this is just as I store my data and then delete so that that is how it works and I do a lot I mean I just paint, try, delete everything. I don't like it. I activate again. I don't save that much the layers. 
but sometimes yeah it's it's good to to have it and just it's worth to note if you don't delete okay you say okay i don't need to delete this because i it's uh, for a personal project on my machine and i will don't uninstall ng skin tools there is a penalty on the uh, performance so you better know that so it's 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 lower so when you finish you clean up your your ng skin uh, notes and your rig is gonna perform faster okay so stop talking and let's show some some examples here so i have this one and i just want to reassign everything to one joint so i'm just gonna paint here and replace everything to the first joint so it's this one it highlights in light blue which one is there so flood and everything is white to this one and now i want to use the edit way tools it's just the part that i want to show you now before finish this video and i use all available influences in the skin no i use the other one selected influence on the list there this is the list there I always have this to the highest position and these two I don't touch it so I just select my joints like this and assign okay so you can see that I can assign a tube or uh, something like this a chain quickly just selecting all the joints selecting the parts or just partial so I can just uh, come here again and assign two to, to one if you don't click here paint it's gonna make effects it's gonna I mean it's gonna apply what you do with the changes but it, the visualization is not there so uh, to be honest when I'm skinning and doing this with these techniques many times I don't even need to check what is going on there I, I know more or less where, where it's gonna uh, finish but yeah for the example I, I'm gonna try to to give you the the visualization with the the colors so now I can select some points like this area here I'm just going to activate paint again and then I'm going to reassign this area with edit weight so you can see that it's very flexible just with this option so you can reassign everything or just by selecting some points and reassign to a set or subset of uh, joints and it's going to make kind of the um, uh, the uh, transition from one joint to another and here's where I want to make the example so I'm just gonna paint again I, look at, I don't check what is going on there but I know it's gonna be everything uh, spread uh, with the joint so uh, and that's how it looks okay so now I want to talk another option here and I'm gonna go to my guide and by default um, a shifter creates a separated joint structure means the joint structure that is this one here it's in under joint organization and you have this nice hierarchy here of joints but you can ask to don't do it so each of the joints will be under the the rig and under the 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 actual object that drives the joint so in this case it's going to be the the controls itself because it's a very simple chain so this will be under here this under here and so on and it has some some advantages why are you doing that because if you do this separated thing it's cleaner for uh, organization and it looks nicer like my style thing but uh, it's slower simple as that because you need to connect this with this and it does some uh, matrix multiplications and operations and it takes some uh, performance on that so that's one thing and the other is that you the way that it's gonna work the skinning is gonna be slightly different and we're gonna take advantage of that in some point so let's do another rig I'm just changing my settings to uh, uncheck the separated join structure so I'm just gonna build a new one oh great it's there so let me select the second one and I'm gonna align it to the other example object so it's clear the connection is not made because this structure it's in between as you can see each one is child of one of the controls and I don't have the joint organization the placement behavior and naming is exactly the same so you always can build and unbuild export your skins reapply and they are 
totally compatible. These have some advantages, these have some advantages. Uh, for instance, if you want to use the rotation of the joints one against the other to drive some corrective line shapes, you cannot do it here because there is no differential between the rotations. It's, it's in a completely different uh, hierarchy space. So here you can do it. So again, it's what you need or what you don't need. You can go for one or the other option. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna select my deformers, select my mesh. I have some shortcuts here on my quick launcher. This is a tool from Cesar, it's on GitHub. I will also add the uh, the link on the description if you want to, uh, to download it and install it. And it's really, really, really useful. So I'm just gonna apply my skin and I'm gonna initialize. So by default, it's almost what I want, but I just want to, to redo it again. So you can see here the difference. So I'm just gonna assign to one, everything is in white. Then I select all the, the joints and reassign again. And yeah, that's what I want to show you here. So the assignment looks the same, but it's not the same because here is aligned uh, or assigned with the closest and here is closest on hierarchy. And let me, let me do something. So it's going to be clear. So here, you can see this is the joint. Whoop, I'm just going to use another color. This is the joint here in the center. And the skinning is from here to here, from here to here, and so on. So basically, this is center here. And the skinning is in both directions. Obviously, this is from here to the end. But if we check the other one, I'm just going to Set it here. I'm just gonna paint. You can see that it's slightly different. Here it's not so clear, but if you go to the next one, it starts where the joint is and continue until the next one. And so on. So there is a clear difference when I have my joint structure separated and connected in the direct result that we get when we assign quickly these influences. So why I'm telling you this, okay, first it's, it's good to know, of course, but there is an advantage for how I skin depending on which uh, component or which solver I'm using to solve some of the data. So for FK and regular parts, probably this is better to have everything connected, but sometimes especially uh, on the arms and legs, the solver that I'm using is uh, the rolling spline solver. So it works differently than the spline IK solver. So that's something that you need to know there. I will go over that later when we, when we check that on the model. But for the moment, just uh, keep this in a note or somewhere on your mind that it's gonna, it's gonna be some difference there. Okay, so I think this it's uh, the end for this video. Let's continue with the character. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.